Hi guys, Lewis here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Visual Composer. And Visual Composer is both a back-end and front-end visual page builder for WordPress. Uh, in this video, though, we're only going to be focusing on the front-end editor, and this will be a brief overview. So let's jump straight in. First impressions of the interface is that it's, you know, it's quite modern, very clean. There's no sidebar and instead it uses a uh, the floating window approach. So if I click to add an element, you'll see that it brings up this library. And I still don't know if I like that as much. Um, it is only one extra step, but I do feel it, especially when you're doing it repetitively. So let's add an element here and I'm gonna go in and add uh, an icon. The customization window here can be um, moved around. Uh, it can be resized. Um, so it's quite flexible. One thing it can't do though is snap to the side. That's something I would have liked to have seen there, but um, overall it's quite good. In terms of the customization options, to be honest, they're not very intuitive. Um, there's lack of uh, visuals. So for example, if I do icon alignment, you can see here that I'm having to click and choose rather than have a, a visual representation that where you just click once. And it seems like a small thing, but this is represented everywhere throughout this plugin, and it really does start to, to grind on you after a while. One other thing I wanted to talk about here was the columns. Um, I found them very confusing. So to add columns, I, I was looking for a while and I just couldn't find it. I looked in the module library. I couldn't find any uh, column elements. Um, then I found column settings here, so I opened the column settings and again, nothing nothing there to set columns. And uh, eventually I found it hidden away under the row settings. So if I click this little arrow, um, I can click this and then choose the row settings. You'll notice here that they have actually gone for um, a visual approach, which is something I would have liked to have seen implemented uh, in a lot more places because this is pretty much the only place that they've gone, they've gone for that. I found the columns the column stuff to be just really, really hidden away and um, something that took me a good while to figure out. And that really highlights some of the flaws in the interface as a whole because they haven't made it very intuitive. Um, they haven't put things where you would expect them to be. And that's one thing I noticed uh, immediately when I started using this plugin. So let's talk about the elements library and you saw it a moment ago, but it does come preloaded with a number of element, elements. Uh, a, a few of these are, are, I would consider, redundant elements. So you've got things like singled out social buttons, which of course it would be better to use a dedicated plugin or an element that incorporates multiple social networks. Um, at the moment, it just feels like an attempt to bulk out the library, which obviously um, I'm not a fan of. It does include some third party elements uh, like Contact Form 7 and WooCommerce. Um, but it still feels like it's lacking a lot in this department. And really, it's no surprise that there are over 200 premium modules that you can buy, um, and that's listed on the Visual Composer website. Obviously, you have to pay for those, but some of them include ridiculous things that you would expect to be in the default plugin, like uh, a good example is an undo button. I think that should never come at a premium. That's, that's just something you would expect to see in the plugin. Uh, when you buy it initially. Now, as for global elements, um, there's not much to say on that because Visual Composer doesn't support global elements at all. And as far as I, I can see, there's no add-ons um, that, that enable that as well. So overall, I'm not very impressed uh, with what you get out of the box. And I think the, um, the elements could, could use a lot of work. All right, so let's talk about uh, flexibility and I'll start with the level of customization you get over individual elements because I found that it offers very very little control and if we take a look at a, a text block for example I'm gonna throw a text block in here and it brings up the settings um, one thing I noticed was that there's no way to adjust uh, line height uh, there's no way to adjust letter spacing and you can't even adjust um, the font size. It's just based on the standard WordPress editor and the, and the default heading tags that you get. Um, but it's very, very limited in terms of, of what you can control. Um, and unless you're willing to dive into the CSS uh, quite a lot, then you're going you're gonna to really feel that lack of customization. 
In terms of layout flexibility, as I mentioned earlier, you can split a row into several columns by clicking this, and it works. It, it does feel a bit drawn out. Um, I feel like there should be a column widget that you can just drag in and immediately have the columns that you want. Um, but again, it does work. One thing I really don't like is that you, you can't adjust the column width. So if I put a um, two column layout here and I click update, it puts those in there, but I can't adjust those widths. It's, it's very rigid. Um, again, lack of control. Um, and overall, that seems to be the, the theme here with both the, the individual elements and the, and the layout uh, columns as, as a whole. So overall, the, the page builder feels quite rigid. Um, you don't get a lot of control with pretty much everything here, especially the elements and especially the, the columns. That's, that's a really weak area. Let's talk about templates because Saving saving elements is it doesn't work the way that you you probably probably be used to. It actually saves a preset and not the actual element. So it, it's not a whole lot different, but again, it does require more steps. Having to load the default element first and then apply a preset. So for example, if I opened up this text block and I wanted to save uh, the settings I had here, I'd click this cog icon and save as preset. And that means every time you want to apply that preset, you first need to load the default element and then apply the preset. So I notice that it's taking the long way around here, and that is a recurring theme with Visual Composer. In terms of saving uh, rows and sections, notice that it's taking the long way around here, and that seems to be a, a recurring theme with Visual Composer. Now. In terms of saving rows and sections, the good news is that you can actually save these as templates. So if I open this row up and I open the settings and I click the cog icon, you'll see that it actually gives me the option to save this as a template. So if I save this here, I'm just gonna call it template. And I click save changes. Now that's saved. And I should now be able to insert that by going to the templates library. Sorry, no, the, the my templates tab and you can see here I've got a uh, template added and if I click that it gives me a drop down arrow that I can uh, preview that section and it does take a few seconds but this is a good way to see exactly what you're inserting before you insert it that is something that I haven't seen on uh, many other page builders and I think it's a really good really useful feature so let's say I want to insert that into my content I just click the plus arrow here and it drops that straight in to save a full page template, all you have to do is click the uh, templates button up here, give your template a name, so call it my page, save template, and it will appear above here. And again, it's just a case of clicking the plus arrow to insert that entire layout that you've just saved. So that's pretty good, I do like that. Um, in terms of a template library of you know, pre-designed layouts, that would be under the template library here and then you click access library and it takes a few seconds and what happens is uh, it gives you a bunch of different uh, content templates and I say content templates because most of these are not what you would expect in terms of a full page layout they're just sections of a page layout the difference there is that you're almost having to piece it together bit by bit and you end up with a kind of Frankenstein page that doesn't really fit together very well um, so I really think they're lacking in terms of full page layouts and they could even you know, categorize this just to give you a, a better feel for which, which of these are actually full page layouts and which are just uh, sections of a layout. And I think they've done that just to, just to really bulk out the library similar to how they've done with the elements. So that's quite disappointing. Overall though, you know, the, in, in terms of templates, it's not bad. Um, they do give you qu quite a bit of functionality. Um, but it's, it's definitely lacking a good selection of full page templates. Okay, let's talk about speed. And admittedly, Visual Composer has gotten on a lot faster since its days as a, a backend only editor. But it's not quite as nippy as I was hoping for. Um, there's certain restrictions that slow you down. And a good example of that is not being able to edit text directly. So I can't just click here and edit this text. I actually have to click the edit button and it opens up a customization window, which takes a few seconds to load. And that does get really old, really fast. Um, and it's not just the loading aspect of it, because even when you make changes, those changes aren't reflected automatically. You have to actually click save to see anything happen. So a good example of this, if I just change this to text and I press save changes, 
that's when it applies. It doesn't apply as you're doing it. And even when you click save changes, there is a, a one or two second delay there. So, you know, everything from opening the customization window to making the changes, to clicking the save button, to waiting for those changes to actually uh, take effect, it really does feel drawn out. And when you're repeating those actions over and over and over, that's a lot of time that you're, that you're accumulating there. So to sum up, it's not the slowest page builder on the market. Uh, but it, but it's a lot more drawn drawn out than it needs to be, and there's plenty of room to improve the overall speed and efficiency of this page builder, in my opinion. Okay, let's move on to support. And one thing I found really odd was that there is absolutely no pre-sale support, or at least as far as I could tell. Um, there is a dedicated website, but I couldn't even find a contact page. Um, again, I found it very odd, and I did look hard for a point of contact. Um, but it's not something that they, they, they obviously don't want you to contact them. And that doesn't set a good uh, impression for potential customers. Though email support thankfully is available for customers. Um, and they also have a YouTube channel with over 70 videos. Though it does seem to be, um, to have been abandoned in the last year. Um, and one thing I was really hoping for was a Facebook community. But as much as, I, as much as I looked, I couldn't find anything that really had developed any real community. And overall, there's not much to say on the support front. Um, it's pretty weak, and email is pretty much your only lifeline if you run into any potential issues. All right, finally, let's talk about price. Even though it does have a dedicated website, you can only buy it through uh, Code Canyon. So if I click Get Visual Composer, it takes me through to uh, Code Canyon. Now, at the time of recording, it's $34, um, but that's actually for a single site license without commercial rights. Um, so that means if you want to use it on a client site, you need the extended license at $170. And again, that's just for one site. And compared to other page builders in, uh, with a similar price bracket, it's not cost effective at all. And a good example is Beaver Builder, which is $99 one time for unlimited sites. So while it might seem like a good price, $34 isn't that much, um, it can quickly become one of the more expensive page builders depending on how many sites you own and how you plan to use it. Overall, uh, as I said earlier, it has come a long way since it first hit the market, um, but it's definitely not a scratch on more recent, more modern page builders like Elementor, Drive Content Builder, and even Divi Builder in my opinion. So that's a quick overview of Visual Composer. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.